All right, Malekith, one of my favorite boss fights in Elden Ring. Such an amazing design, and what could be more awesome than wielding the very concept of death itself as a physical blade? But before that, we encounter him as a wolf in sheep's clothing. Well, a very violent sheep, I suppose. Not the kind you would count in order to fall asleep, unless it's a permanent type of sleep. But our initial introduction to him is the beast clergyman Garank, who exchanges some very interesting equipment for death roots. Mainly the Bestial Incantations, which are, despite their name, not actually the best. However, with a proper setup, can be quite effective. However, the interesting thing about them is their very low stat requirements. In fact, all of Garang's attacks can be used on a level 1 character, either straight out of the gate or with quite minimal stat boosting. Now, Malekith's setup is a different story, but the Black Blade, and even the extremely heavy armor, can still be used even at level 1, given the absurd amount of stat boosting that is available in this game. So, what would it be like to go through the game with a level 1 character using only Garang slash Malekith's equipment, weapons and incantations? Would this be an effective way of handling a level 1 run? And how will the beast incantations hold up if your only goal is to meet the stat requirements rather than an actual faith build? Or will it turn out that you're basically better off just using the dagger primarily? Which on a side note was my main weapon category of choice on my very first playthrough. By the way, question for all of you. When we finally get a DLC, what will your weapon of choice be for your first journey through the DLC? Not counting what awesome new weapons might get introduced. And of course, speaking of awesome weapons, Malekith has one hell of a weapon and one hell of a badass looking armor. And it is a great setup. However, fighting as him while also staying at level 1? Now that's a whole different kind of animal. Regardless, let us see if we can turn an RL1 beauty into a beast. Alright, we start off as a, well, as a level 1 character, obviously. And of course, we go through the standard collecting marathon you start any playthrough with. But given that there's no Garang outfit in the game, I chose the Prophet Rope, which comes pretty close. And of course, Radagon Sword Seal as the eternal first talisman you use. Although, we don't even need any stat boosting gear initially. Because the Sankidea Dagger... Cinque Dea. Cinque Dea. Because the Sinkidea dagger, that you find by going down the side of the Bestial Sanctum, which I definitely did successfully on my first attempt, is a dagger that has exactly the strength and dexterity requirements of 10. And that will be our first source of damage since the Bestial incantations require you to feed death roots to Garang. It's kind of ironic that such an iconic and lore relevant dagger, at least on paper, is pretty unimpressive. No bonus critical damage, no changeable Ash of War, and you cannot buff or infuse it. However, in practice, it's actually pretty decent, as you will see. And on top of that, it will boost the damage of Bastel Incantations. Now, in Limgrave, there are two death roots available. First one is from one of the million tib Well, there are actually only four in the game, but it sure as hell does feel like there are more than that. But yeah, the Tibia Summoner himself is not much of a threat. It's his legion of marrow holding minions that can easily get you killed through sheer numbers. And uh, speaking of how numbers can get you killed, I was experiencing some unexpected technical issues and the frame rate went from 60 to below 30 until it went even further down which turned the game into kind of a slideshow. So I suppose that gravity and the camera have found a worthy contender. Now, fortunately I was able to fix these issues, 
And hey, those were still more frames per second than From Software has been willing to add to the existing 30 in Bloodborne. However, the first death root only provides us with the appropriate seal, but in order to get an incantation, we need a second death root, which you can find behind the Black Knife Assassin in North Limgrave. And to be honest, I never actually fight against the assassins, so I kinda had very little knowledge about their moveset. However, for some no doubt lore related reason, this particular one is wounded, and therefore already on the last leg. But despite having a leg up on me given that I don't know her moveset, I don't think she was putting her best foot forward, because her damage output was kinda limp. So yeah, a cool boss in principle, but this particular one was kinda lame. Now it would actually have been theme appropriate to have to face a fragment of desert death long before acquiring it myself, but this one didn't have that attack in the first place. However, even though the Black Blade is something for far later in the playthrough, but by giving this death route to Garang, we get our first Bessel incantation, which is essentially uh, pocket sand. Yeah, it's not that exciting, I guess. However, I do appreciate how connecting with your inner animal requires you to go back to your roots. Like being one with nature. Yes, now you can hear the forest talking, insects and birds. Does the scent of soil and beast bring the life into the animal you hide? And that's a great illusion, one never knows. When you think you're really alone, you feel the eyes of someone looking in. So now it was time to test out my new pocket sand against Margit. And it was a bit, uh, eh, a bit meh. And not merely because my seal was at plus zero, given that my dagger was as well, because for some completely arbitrary reason, I didn't upgrade my weapons until uh, way further into the playthrough than uh, would make sense. But the thing is that not only did the dagger do more damage, but given how little extra reach the stone sling provides, there's kind of no incentive to use it other than, well, using it just for the sake of using it. Now from what I understand, this type of incantation is actually one that shines in PvP, but it seems to have little benefit in PvE. Regardless, I might still be able to find at least some niche use for it. Moreover, something that I didn't know yet at this point was that the Clormark Seal has an unusual property. Namely that it benefits from strength scaling, meaning that two-handing it will provide a damage boost, just like with a melee weapon. Of course then the downside would be that you cannot easily switch between dagger attacks and spell damage, but as you will see later on, once I learned this, it did provide a noticeable benefit. But we do now have an extra talisman slot. So I went and got the faith boosting talisman, which we're going to need for the later incantations. Because again, uh, the pocket sand is just not really doing it for me. So in that sense, so far at least, it kind of looks like this is going to turn into a simple dagger focus playthrough, at least initially. And to be fair, even unupgraded, the Syncidea is performing quite well. Even though as I said on paper, it looks like a complete disappointment. Actually the same thing applies to the crystal knife. Pretty bad on paper. But when you actually use it in practice, it's actually quite viable. On a side note, even though I really enjoy fighting Godric, am I the only one who regards him as an easier encounter than Margit? I mean, after the first playthrough, Godric kind of loses his intimidation factor. Regardless, Godric as a boss fight is still very well crafted, and dare I say it, very well grafted. But of course, we are going to be at level 1 for the entire playthrough, so the difficulty is going to increase by quite a margin the further we progress in the game. Not everything will eventually one-shot us, but certainly many attacks will. Because that is kind of the nature of the beast. So something that would definitely benefit me would be the Opaline Crystal Bubble tier from the Earth Tree Avatar in the Weeping Peninsula. And I actually found a use for the pocket sand in this fight. Two in fact. First of all, against certain enemies when locked on, even when pressed up right against the boss, Short range weapons like daggers have a tendency to miss at seemingly random times. However, the bestial sling doesn't have that problem. Moreover, I even accident I mean with strategic intent, I ducked right underneath the avatar's staff, using nothing more than the attack animation itself. Now, contrary to the bubble tier, you might assume that the bestial vitality incantation would not be all that useful on level 1, given that I could now acquire it by defeating the Tibia Mariner in Lyonia and without turning it into a slideshow this time, but it actually works very well in combination with the bubble tier, especially later on when I would acquire the Ritual Sword Talisman, 
Because the thing with the bubble tier is that you take a set amount of chip damage when the shield breaks. And therefore it combines very well with the other tier you get from the same avatar, which then automatically regenerates your health back to full. But given how relevant my physic flask would be during this entire playthrough, Bishop Vitality could give me that health regeneration, which allows me to keep one of my tier slots free for my physic flask. Of course, eventually, I would need both of them, just for stat boosting alone. Now, it took me a while to actually realize that uh, though. But, uh, well, in order to get an actual new attack, I would need the death route behind the cemetery shade in the Black Knife Catacombs. Which is another mini boss that I have next to no experience with. And I guess it kind of showed. But it wasn't so much the shade itself. It was the fact that this version, just like a Tibia Mariner, has a skeletal gangfest as well. Uh, this is not good. Come on, this is a mess. Why do we have all these enemies here? And I again forgot to equip the shield here. No, okay, well, whatever. Uh, oh, I'm stuck. And now I'm getting my face eaten off. Maybe I should have upgraded. <laughs> I do so little damage to these skeletons. Jesus fuck. How much damage do I... Oh, the cemetery shade is actually... He has way less... Oh, can I kite him around the room? And then use Beastle Sling? Oh, that, does not, that, that doesn't do a lot of damage. That's weird. The problem is actually hit... Oh, I got an arrow in the side of the head. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, well, I should just focus on the cemetery shade then. Ah, come on! Yeah, I cannot get out of it. Oh, fuck. Huh? How did that first one not hit? Huh. Fuck. Behind the pillar? Ooh, ooh, okay, it still didn't hit me. Oh, come on! What the fuck? Die! Oh, I thought he was already dead. <laughs> oh. Well, we don't need that, but at least it, the death root should be inside of this chest. Okay. Alright, see, there it is. Nice. That's better. <laughs> yeah, I was actually expecting the Beast Claw, but that would be the next death root. And it's such a weird design choice to make the Syncadea's Ash of War unchangeable, because then at least I could simply have the Beast Roar on the appropriate dagger. Unfortunately, in order to get the Beast Claw incantation, I would have to defeat yet another Tibia Mariner. And this one not only has way too much health, because remember that I still, for no meaningful reason whatsoever, hadn't upgraded either my dagger or seal yet. And on top of that, this Mariner could summon High Lord Wolnir to insta-kill me. And without any breakable bracelet BS to abuse. And therefore I made the arguably, well, much worse decision to head into Galmir's Hero's Grave. Again, with my weapon still at plus zero. Because another death route was available behind the boss of this particular dungeon. And again, one I never went through in any previous playthrough. And because of that, people in the chat were eagerly awaiting to see me suffer through the chariot puzzle. But unfortunately for them, the game is a year old already. So even though I haven't been through here myself, I have seen footage about this insidious and insanity inducing shenanigans, so I already knew how it worked in theory. And I was in fact able to put it into practice first try. <laughs> and everyone was disappointed. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm stuck here uh, at the boss with unupgraded weapons at level 1. So, uh... Uh oh. Oh, no! I shouldn't have rolled. Fuck. Ah, oh, it went quite well. Should be doable. Not the greatest camera, but it worked out. Oh, come on! Fuck, I hate it when he just jumps towards you while the projectiles are coming. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> but uh, your question was, why not upgrade your weapon and seal? I can, I just choose not to. Because I'm an idiot. 
Oh, oh fuck, come on! Really? How did I not outstrave it? Ooh! Hey, whoa, he, he stopped his attack. That was kind of weird. Fuck! No! Come on! I thought he would go past me. Wow, it feels like I died 666 times by now because this beast is doing a number on me. Yeah, it's kind of ironic that the Red Wolf of Radagon has so little health, but this copy, well, not cat, but another dog at Contender or something, I don't know. But the point is that this version is quite a hot diggity dog compared to the quote unquote original. Which in this game is sometimes a bit hard to define. So yeah, I guess that the audience did get to enjoy my suffering after all. Well, at the very least I learned at this point that you can two hand the seal for extra damage. And the dagger could still be useful. Because if I would get a stance break, I could get a critical. Ooh. Oh, huh? What the fuck was that? Oh, come on! What the hell was that? I was trying to do the critical and it didn't work. Nah. What kind of doggy dude dog shit was that? I had him! I feel like the run hasn't even properly started yet and it's already going to the dogs. Come on, throw me a bone instead. I'm spending ages here on this very fight alone, and the only reason I'm here in the first place is for the freaking death route. Don't have enough FP! No! Oh! Son of a biscuit! Whoa! Just die! I can't reach that far! Go on, yes! There! There! Fuck alicious! Oh! Oh my god. That was terrible that I was out of FP at the last moment there. <sighs> okay, we did it without upgrades at level 1. Oh. Yeah, first try. Ah, very nice. Alright, we got another death route for dear old Gorang. It may took the death of another wolf to feed a wolf, but he must be so proud of me right now. Thank you all. That will need me. <laughs> Oh, oh, whoa, whoa! Okay. Well, out of the frying pan and into the belly of the beast. Huh. Uh, hold on a sec. Let me just get... Uh, okay, let me just make a quick phone call. Yeah, hello, Mr. Miyazaki. I have, uh, I have a quick question. The fuck? Eat my board! So after like 10 freaking minutes of keeping the wolf at bay with my stupid little still at plus zero dagger and seal, we finally tamed the beast and instead of getting his dagger to my face, I get his claw in my my seal, I suppose. I'm actually not sure how that works. I mean, I guess incantations are like scrolls with magic words on them or something. Even though you don't say anything or maybe you... Put them inside this? Is, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Well, however it may function, we now have a spell that can actually inflict more damage than the dagger. Especially because you can actually charge it. At least if you get the opportunity for it. It's not the quickest attack after all. And although you would think that I would have had enough of the Red Wolf fight by now, but given that Ronaldo was next on the list, I had little choice but to jump back into the fray. But unlike of the champion, of Radagon had little health and much lower damage output. So this red wolf went down first try, but also on the first attempt this time. 
Although I did get uncomfortably close to dying anyway. I mean, it is still a level 1 run after all. So you would think that I would have learned my lesson by now and simply went to upgrade my seal and dagger. Given that once again there was absolutely no good reason I was still at plus 0. Especially given that I already have to deal with being at level 1. But hey, come on, it's Ranala. And I do have my new fancy beast claw. So if we fight to vanil, I don't think we need any upgrades to save my hide. Oh fuck, no! No! Come on! No! Oh my god, seriously! Oh. I messed up right at the fucking end. Stupid! Okay, that's a little bit too much of a big oof. I almost got the first try and then I messed up right at the end. You know what? I think I tortured myself long enough with uh, without weapon upgrades. Of course, we are going to continue this run then on uh, Saturday. And on Friday, we're going to be playing Bloodborne on BL11, which sounds as a completely random number, but it has to do with the Kirkhammer that uh, has the lowest stat requirements. Uh, the lowest level that you can be in order to wield the Kirkhammer is BL11. So that's why that's such a random number. Ah, uh, you see? That's a massive difference. Well, the dagger is definitely better in this situation, though. Oh, whoa! What the fuck? I was still in the fire. Hey, hello! Uh, what the fuck is this? Why is the dragon still here? What the fuck? Why is the, what the fuck is going on? That's cheating. The dragon was th th there for double the length that he is usually here. Son of a biscuit. <laughs> double dragon, yeah. <laughs> fuck, don't fuck up now. Whoa, 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 don't fuck up near the end. Okay, quickly finish it. That's better. <laughs> you can still die from the dragon. That's, uh, that would be a little bit uh, insulting. Alright, that's better. <laughs> the dragon was dragging on. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, that uh, definitely made a lot, uh, lot of difference uh, upgrading. <laughs> Alright then, so now I finally had upgraded my weapons. It was time to finally rid the world of the third, yet still not final Tibia Summoner, in order to acquire what's arguably the best eel incantation, namely the Stone of Garang, or the Rock Sling as a surprising number of people in the chat mistakenly called it, which is another type of spell. And given that we got a new talisman slot after Ronala, I acquired the Ritual Sword Talisman for an extra 10% damage bonus, at least when at full health. But as I mentioned before, when the Opaline Bubble tier breaks, you receive a little bit of chip damage, which nullifies that damage boost. But instead of wasting another Crystal tier for health regen, Bestial Vitality would serve that role. Well, at least whenever I actually happen to remember to use it. But at least I did make good use of my Power Pebble, which is a quite significant improvement over the one in Bloodborne at least. Although I'm not sure if it got nerfed at some point, but my impression was that it was great for stance breaking. Which didn't happen as much as I expected that it would. Well, I guess I was playing things rather safely because I am level 1 after all. But still, when it comes to regular damage, it was my most damaging spell so far. However, even though two-handing the seal would increase that, I noticed that against the Dragon Rider... <laughs> wow, I actually wrote the Dragon Rider in the script here. Well, to be fair, it's a more fitting name for this guy than for the actual Dragon Riders in Dark Souls 2. But my point is that the stone and the dagger combine quite well together. Because the stone is very helpful to use at a distance when the horse is not spamming fire breath. And whenever either the boss or I myself close the distance, I can switch between quick melee combat and then going back to throwing rocks whenever he moves away or leaves himself vulnerable. And this is actually quite similar to how I fought him the very first time on my blind playthrough. Where I was using the Reduvia dagger, where I would use the weapon art in a similar way I was using my Dwayne Johnson here.
Actually, for this one, I think I should use Basil Sling because you can use it in the air. And of course, the dagger. Oh, whoa, 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 what the hell am I doing? Okay, that was... That was dumb. I just didn't... <laughs> I just didn't dodge. Yeah, that's gonna work. You see, you can use that in the air, and actually, that's pretty significant damage. Oh, whoa, stamina, stamina, stamina! Come on, don't die against Godfrey. Godfrey is so easy. You can easily kill him with a plus zero dagger, come on. Come on, press. That's not necessary. Don't know if I can safely drink a flask when he's getting up. Uh, barely, but it worked. Yeah, the arena can be a little annoying here. It's better if he's in the... In the center. That's better. <laughs> that is better. Yeah, a kind of unnecessary second attempt victory against Goldfree. But hey, who knows, perhaps the twist will be a second attempt victory against Melania as well. Yeah, ambitious. Well, we're nowhere near Melania yet, so we have to put those foolish ambitions to rest. Because Morgoth is next in line. However, given that we have our final talisman slot now, I went and picked up the strength talisman. First of all, because we would obviously need it eventually to be able to wield Malekith's Black Blade. However, it also boosts the damage of the Clormark Seal because of its peculiar strength scaling. And even more peculiar, the Sinkidea is primarily a strength weapon. And all in all, that has been the main weapon of this run so far. Because let's face it, the incantations are definitely useful. But without a specific proper build, you kind of inevitably just revert back to your melee roots. However, speaking of roots, after Morgoth, one more death route would actually provide us with another melee weapon. A dagger that becomes the blade of death, and his own beastly claw. However, claws come in many forms. Two more forms, in fact. One of which is a very interesting melee weapon that I had never used before. So I was quite curious to see how that one would perform. Of course, we would first need to actually get past Morgoth. Uh, it's better maybe to not randomly chuck a stone given that he can also throw his daggers. Yeah, I miss his still with my dagger. But at least the follow up is pretty much guaranteed, so. Should be fine. Oh, he jumps. Oh, whoa, 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 the uh, diarrhea. I don't want death by diarrhea. <laughs> I shouldn't even try to uh, hit the steel anymore. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> he actually, uh, he was going to run into it, but it actually has on, uh, enough reach for that. <laughs> to hit him from there. Alright then. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, hey, where's Morgan? Oh, he's all the way over there. <laughs> I have to sit on his face, of course. There we go. Uh, actually, it's more... I'm not sure if this really is a punishment, right? So, yeah. So, now with access to the mountaintops of the giants, we could make our way to the final Tibia Mariner. 
Yes, it's actually the final one. Which does make you reflect upon life when you add that level of finality to the lack of finality that death brings in this particular world. Depending on what death even means in a realm like the Lands Between. So obviously this got me and my stream chat into a very philosophical mood. As the things we discuss during gameplay are of the most sophisticated and intellectual nature. As you might imagine. Oh, is, there, is there a brother Jacob in English? I didn't even know that. I know it's in Flemish, but yo, that uh, is not so surprising. Yes, is there like brother Jacob, brother Jacob. Uh, are you still asleep? Are you still asleep? All the bells are ringing, all the bells are ringing. Bim bam, <laughs> yeah, bim bam, bim bam bam, bim bam. <laughs> what the hell would that, yeah, what the hell is that in English then? Oh, hey, that, hey, there we have the German version. Bruder Jakob, Bruder Jakob, schlafst die noch, schlafst die noch, hörst die nicht die Glocken, hörst die nicht die Glocken, ding dang dong, ding dang dong. Ja, das ist die Bruder Jakob, der. Ah, nice. Das ist super geil, toll, klasse, ja, die Bruder Jakob, ja, die Germans, die deutschen Bruder Jakob. Very nice. Wow, that's the second Elder Ring video in a row in which I can make fun of Germans. And no, you cannot claim that this makes me bigoted against Germans because remember that making fun of Germans is part of Dutch culture. And you got to respect other people's cultures. There are only two things I can't stand in this world. People who are intolerant of other people's cultures and the Dutch. Well, strangely enough, the final tibia marrow is not even classified as a boss, nor is it protected by other skeletons. Well, it is, but, but indirectly in the entire area before it for some reason. Despite that, the fight oddly enough still went at uh, a bit of a snail's pace, making it a bit of a slugfest. Regardless, I now had another death route which would allow me to use a rather unique weapon that I had never even used before, namely the Regal Beast Claw. Now it does require 18 faith, meaning I would need Merka Scar Seal, which is a talisman I don't think I ever used before either. So I had to look up in what area it was. But, you know, if there's any sort of animalistic instinct at the core of my very being, then it would have to be the instinct of a homing pigeon. So, let me check. The scar seal is uh, right down the road. Okay, that sounds clear enough. Should take only about a minute or so. I haven't picked up the map. Hey, what's, what's this, by the way? There's a portal here? I don't even know where this goes. Okay, wrong way. Okay, then... Damn it, I have no idea then where I'm going. So you cannot get up here from this side. Aw, oh, come on. Because this is the location. From the second way, somewhere in the middle, there's a pillar with a portal. Okay. There's a pillar with a portal? <laughs> I have absolutely no clue. Worshipper Woods? But... Which one? Oh, that, that's this one. That was the right one. That was the right one. It was the right one. So here on a broken pillar, on a broken pillar, where's a broken pillar here? I don't see any broken pillars. Oh boy, I have no idea where I'm going. Okay, teleport, <laughs> oh my god, this sucks. Yeah, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I don't see anything. Okay, here, I've never seen this before. Ah, nice. Okay, first try. Ah, that was easy. First, uh, first try. Easy pickup. Easy pickup. All right. So that took about a minute or so if we round it, if we round it down a little. But now we finally have a new melee weapon, a great hammer that has the power of the beast claw as a weapon art, and quite a lot of power, in fact. It was a surprisingly decent weapon, despite it doing split holy damage. But the damage was more than decent, and the weapon art is downright destructive, especially against large enemies. If I stand like here, maybe... Uh, oh, that was definitely more damage. Oh, it's, the damage is actually very good of this, uh, if it hits. Let's do charge or twos, because I'm out of FP. And this at least does a lot of poise damage. 
Unfortunately, the eye doesn't even take that much damage. I don't understand that. It's supposed to be his weak point, but it's not even that weak. Okay, almost. Give me one more opportunity. Kill him. Yes! That was pretty good, actually. The, I like uh, the Regal Beast Claw. I mean, it's spread out, but in so certain circumstances, that's still helpful. Like, at the end there. Very nice. Alright, Fire Giant on level 1. Goes down first try and on the first attempt. Very nice. As I said, an efficient weapon. And I bet it would be even more efficient against the godskins. But before that, we had one more death route to obtain. Well, technically two, but the final one would be useless. Well, actually, this one was useless as well because I didn't even end up using Garang's Beast Claw. Given that the one I'm holding is the superior version under these circumstances. But regardless, we did go to the Hidden Stray Mimic tier. Which is exactly the same as the regular Mimic tier. Just not spayed and neutered and given a home with new owners or something, I don't know. Not quite sure what the reason behind it was, but... As I said, the actual final death route was completely useless. Because it gives you a regular Ancient Dragonstone. And I only required a somber one at this point. Moreover, I wasn't exactly looking forward to fighting an Ulcerated Tree Spirit. Or, well, get to it in the first place. There was only one true goblin! The Green Goblin! Well, whatever may be the case, we had acquired all of Gorang's attacks by now. And therefore, all that remained was to defeat and then become his true form, Malekith. Unfortunately, in order to turn Bell into a beast, we had to deal with a belly and a... bitch. Unfortunately, as I expected, my new beast color hammer was my... I wrote beast in the script here, yeah? my best option because my incantations were doing way less damage. Moreover, the stone was quite risky to throw since it leaves you rather vulnerable and it obviously cannot go through pillars. But the beast claw can and the regal beast claw is a more powerful version and it did in fact inflict a lot of damage, a surprising amount even. I was quite shocked to be honest, especially if you happen to get a nice double hit given that it covers a wide area. So this looks like a very effective way of dealing with the godskins. And yes, it is in theory, but in practice it may not be quite that simple. Uh oh, no, no, I'm dead, I'm dead. Oh, whoa, I got lucky. I got extremely lucky. How did I not hit him? Ah, uh, no, come on! Damn it, and after getting so lucky, that was actually quite. Uh, that would have been quite a nice victory. Whoa, that was a massive frame drop. And I'm not even hitting anything. Oh! Couldn't miss. <laughs> yeah, couldn't move. It would be nice if I actually hit. So in that sense I have to watch out for the fat one qu quite a bit. Oh, I'm not hitting anything. Oh my god, I've only <laughs> only hit them once. Uh-oh. Yeah, gonna move. Oh, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> oh. Hey, what the fuck? I couldn't even see anything. 
And he's going past it. I'm hope uh, I hope they're happy at from software. Okay, that's one. Oh, wait, come on, what the fuck? Yeah, I have no stamina, I have no stamina, I have no stamina. I wasn't expecting him to break through the pillar. Ah. How are we all? <laughs> How are we all today? Not, uh, it could be better. <laughs> oh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Really? Didn't even see it. <laughs> oh, huh? Out of nowhere he goes into second phase. Now oh, let's hope he doesn't... Oh, fuck. Uh-oh. Yeah, now I'm fucked. Unbelievable. How did that even make sense? He out of nowhere went second phase. Uh-oh. No, I shouldn't have done that. Whoa, I... Oh, whoa. Maybe I should. Oh, huh? Why didn't he <laughs> I couldn't do the critical? Hey, wh why am I crawling? I was crawling. <laughs> what the? <laughs> I was crawling for no reason. So I accidentally pressed. I guess I'm too tense. So I just accidentally pressed L3. Crawling in my god skin. Oh my god, I'm so happy when this fight is finally over. Bit of stamina! No, wrong, 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 wrong! Okay, I wasted my healing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't even die. <laughs> Oh, will the... Oh, hey, don't... Huh? What the fuck? Why? I was directly behind it. Yeah, I didn't even see anything. I literally did not see that fireball coming. Huh? What the hell? Why is he not doing the rolling move? Yeah, now he's going to roll over it, of course. Finish it, please. Finish, 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 finish. What the hell was that? This is... This is... This Speaking of animalistic themes, whoever designed this fight is one sick puppy. Alright then, this time it took a lot of attempts to get a first try victory, but now we could finally make our way to Malekhev. Until I realized something. I would not be able to use the Black Blade without Merica's Sword Seal to get 5 extra faith rather than only 3. Meaning I had to make my way past Loretta first to enter the Hillig Tree. Now Loretta actually gave me quite a bit of trouble because normally on level 1, or heck on any playthrough basically that allows you to parry, I simply always resort to a parry strategy. But given that this was not an option this time, I had to actually deal with all of her different timings and combo variations, while of course avoiding her spells as well. But you know, in all honesty, that was actually a good thing, because it was meaningful training. After all, I would likely have to face her in future runs as well without being able to fall back on a parry strategy. So I guess it was kind of overdue to learn her moveset properly. And in fact, when she finally went down, I not only bested her with my bestial setup, but I had done so without taking a single hit. So hey, that's some good training. Of course I already forgot everything I learned by now, but I guess it's the thought that counts. Regardless, now I was able to enter the Halic Tree, so after making my way to Merica's Source Hill, I had acquired all the stat boosting gear I needed in order to become Malekif in his true form. Although that would of course require me to rid the world of the original first. 
And to me it seemed appropriate to wield the Synchidea in the first phase, just like him. And to use the Great Hammer as a counter to his Great Sword in the second phase. The only downside with that is that you often miss your attacks with a short weapon like a dagger when attacking Malika from the front. Given the way he is hunched over in his Beast Clergyman form. Meaning you tend to swipe underneath him basically. And therefore you're better off attacking him from the side or behind. Other than that I was actually not too worried about Malekev since he is my favorite fight in the entire game and he is actually quite predictable. In fact, as I mentioned in previous videos, it is even quite predictable when he is going to do the slow side swipe because he very often does that after the quick double side swipe with his dagger. In general there is not all that much RNG involved in this fight. However, despite that he still managed to catch me off guard because sometimes, not often, but still twice in a row this playthrough for some reason, he will not do his standard opening at the start of his second phase. So I guess he was testing me to see if I'm just following patterns or whether I could adapt to show that I'm truly worthy of replacing him. Okay, just to be safe, if maybe he doesn't does def combo again. No, not, see now he doesn't, that's the standard way for him to open. Oh, that's not standard. That is not standard at all, and that fucked me over. <laughs> nice little glitch there. I don't like the roll attack of this weapon. It's very weird. Now you will do the death. Oh, he, he doesn't do the death knock. Death combo. Surprising. Now he will then. Yes. Oh, ooh. And that's the end of Malekith. Now we can truly become him. And there we are. We ascended to the heights of the King Among Beasts. Or descended all the way into the Valley of the Shadow of Death. I guess it depends on your perspective, but both are applicable, I suppose. In a way, we will now become a shadow of our former selves. But unlike Malekith... It will not be Merica's shadow, as we will cause her destruction. In fact, I know of a certain someone who can make that happen, but in doing so will lose her former shadow, meaning that there is yet another wolf for us to replace, so that we can become Rani's shadow instead. Well, it takes all of our talisman slots, plus our Flasher of Wonders physic, but we are in fact capable of wielding the Black Blade, even on level 1. So let us unleash the unlimited power of death itself. Now that's power. Especially given that I'm playing on PS5. Like, what the hell did I even do? Is, 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 this, is this fixable? Uh -huh. Anyway, I can also wear the full armor set because of the weight reduction tier. However... That does imply that we have a literal time limit of 3 minutes, after which our weapon will be marked with a red axe and we will only be able to fat roll. There is a way around that, which is Godric's Great Rune. But I wanted to save that for Melania and the Rather Beast, because rune arcs are limited and a pain in the dick to farm for. Arguably the best place to do this is in Castle Morn, 
And sure, sometimes you get lucky. You can even get two rune arcs at the same time. But more often than not, the, the rats will not drop anything to begin with. However, given that we're now going to do Randy's quest line, we are back in the earlier game areas, and I didn't want to have the benefit of a fully upgraded weapon. So after dealing with the ghost version of Loretta at plus zero, I would upgrade to plus four for General Radan, and then to plus six for the remainder of the quest line. Now, for Radan, in a way, throwing rocks at him would have been quite appropriate. But then again, this entire festival exists to provide a proper death to Radan. So if death is his destiny, then destined death he will receive. Oh fuck, I don't have a shield. That's going to be nice. So can I fit the weapon out in here? Oh. Oh, I survived. <laughs> there might be safe opportunities to use the weapon out, but that was not one of them. Maybe this works? Oh no, I don't think so. No, I got lucky. Oh, thank you, camera. Sorry, Leonard. Okay, damage is fine so far. Oh, he doesn't do the... Oh, now he does it. Fuck, and now he don't have an attack opportunity. That sucks. Oh, I staggered him? What the fuck? I never stagger uh, with on. Again, sorry, Leonard. It actually drained all of itself. And actually, the armor was what saved me, <laughs> given that I actually took damage, but I had a little bit of... Uh, Health left. Because uh, you do get uh, quite a bit of damage reduction from uh, the armor, of course. It's heavy for a reason. Oh, Shadow. Thou art the last. Tell the two fingers that Rani the Witch cometh. Drain thy flesh. With a Let's see if I can actually use... It's not even doing anything. That's weird. <laughs> okay. Well, it knocks him on the ground. <laughs> Oh, whoa, whoa. I just wanted to say, I actually have no idea what this guy's moveset is. Well, he does kill me in one hit because I don't have my shield uh, tier anymore. <laughs> can you backstab him? Yes. Maybe now I can use my weapon art. Oh, no. He's still hyper armored uh, right through it. <laughs> Ballania. <laughs> Red balls of Radagon. <laughs> well, if you simply exploit that attack, then he is not... Uh, he's not that big of a deal. Oh, really? He hit me, but I didn't hit him. Well, okay. I just wanted to finish it, but then we'll finish it like this. <laughs> Yeah, Estelle is one of those bosses that I don't really have a good grasp on uh, his moveset. Well, that's actually, uh, that applies to a lot of bosses. Oh, whoop. Okay, that... I did not expect that to hit me, but... The thing with Estelle is... Whether you lock on or not. Oh, the grab attack hitbox. <laughs> I think they had one left from Dark Souls 2, so... Yeah. They, they were like, yeah, just give that grab attack to Estelle. They're gonna love that. <laughs> huh? Oh, his arm is also a hitbox then, when he does that. Okay. That's news to me. Okay, that's nice. Ah, I actually should have used the Destined Death uh, attack. That's a pure guess. Uh-oh. Woo! I iframed it. Uh, 
Oh. Yeah, I always just run sideways and hope for the best. So, let's hope for the best. Well, that was the best. Thank you, camera. Oh, nice. Ah, oh, that was a nice finisher. <laughs> that was a nice finisher. In slow motion, that would probably look good in the music intro. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, but now we actually have to... ...put Blythe out of his misery. I wonder if, uh, if his moveset is different here. Well, that... Oh, hey, he has, actually, he has a follow-up now. Whoa. And now, yeah, he definitely has a... That was his weapon art. His red version didn't do that. All right. We put Blythe out of his misery. So now I'm not merely Rani's shadow, but her actual consort. Meaning that we could create the beast with two backs together. Uh, okay, let's keep it more YouTube friendly. Um, because I have a soft spot for Smurfette. I is that okay, Susan? Susan? All oh, right, she's leaving. Uh... Anyway, now all that is left is to become Elden Lord. And of course, defeat Melania, because... Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, but that is what we're going to do. I do think I'm actually forgetting about someone. <laughs> hmm, what's that smell? Is someone making breakfast or something? Oh no. No, not him. He found me. Sir Gideon Hafnir, the all-knowing. Oh, I knew you would track me down, but I will not go down without a fight. I may not have much health to work with, but I am wielding death in physical form. Which I ironically forgot to now actually upgrade to plus 10. So I was still at plus 6, meaning I wasted uh, the best opportunity I had given that he only gives his little, well, well, his giant speech only once. And well, after you die once, uh, I guess we all know how this goes. Gideon is either the easiest or the hardest boss, depending on what kind of playthrough you do. There's not really anything in between, except for the lands that this fight takes place in. The point is, absolutely nothing I tried worked. In fact, unlike the godskins, I couldn't even cheese him from behind the pillars. Because these ones magically function as, uh, yeah, well, as pillars. So they don't let anything pass through. And therefore the beast claw was not an option. And none of my other spells could outspam the sovereign sire of unsanctimonious spell spamming ad nauseum. I mean, I have built up quite a bit of resistance to rage doing so many challenge runs over the years. But I was legitimately getting pissed off after dying at infinitum. Especially given that right before doing this, I already went through a ton of frustration because I went to collect the iron jar talisman for the maximum weight reduction and after avoiding getting sniped to death, you will need to defeat three NPCs in a row because yes, they do actually respawn. And I had to do this with a three minute time limit and all the NPCs are capable of insta-killing me in fact, even cheesing them with gravity, which was effective, but uh, but it was some foul-smelling moldy cheese, that's for sure. So yeah, I was already not in the best of moods. And then it turned out that not even stun-locking Gideon with the dagger seemed viable. Until I realized that Uncharged R2 attacks would break his animations every single time. Unlike R1 attacks that would sometimes allow him to hyper-armor through for an insta-kill. But okay, once you figure that out, it should work itself out, right? Unbelievable! Unbelievable! I got so lucky! This is not believable. Hey, hello, Mr. Miyazaki? Yeah, it's me again. No, I don't have another question. Uh, I just wanted to tell you... You think this is a game? If I have to chase you forever, you'll pay! Alright, thank you. Have a nice day.
Can you even iframe the shield? I don't even know. Oh, you can. Okay, that's good. No! Fuck you! Well, that was some fuck. Thank you from software. I appreciate that. Oh my god. Well, he's down at least. <laughs> the least satisfying boss in <laughs> that satisfying victory in from software history, probably. Well, sort of, but at least he's down. Okay. Bye, Gideon. It was nice knowing you. Because that's the thing with Gideon. You either outspam the spammer or it's just a nightmare. Damn it, I should have put him in the appropriate folder from the start. Well, at least now we only have three awesome boss fights remaining. But our first priority will be to dethrone the first Elden Lord. Yes, being that must be quite a burden for him to carry. Ironically, with Soros in his back, Godfrey is the one serving as a beast of burden. And once he gets rid of it, he will unleash his animalistic side, or maybe, that is in fact, the most primal form of humanity when you think about it. And as Bloodborne taught us, the line between man and beast is a very thin and blurred one indeed. Now, fighting him with an Ultra Greatsword is not so bad, the only downside is that you cannot do jump attacks, which I love to do in order to turn the stomp AoEs into attack opportunities, but Colossal Swords simply have too much recovery time. And speaking of timing issues, unleashing Death and Death when he transitions into his second phase is indeed possible, but initially I was either too late or even too early. Now to be fair this was more about style points than hit points. And speaking of the latter, for some reason Godfrey's maximum HP is not reduced when struck with Destined Death. I have no idea why, but to my knowledge he is the only boss that has this particular resistance. Could have some sort of a lore reason, or perhaps it simply wasn't even intentional. But speaking of damage, remember that I have to do sufficient damage to him because I have a 3 minute time limit before I start fat rolling and lose the majority of my damage output. Damn it, he's in not in a good position here. Okay, that's better. Okay, nice. Quick. No! Ooh. Okay, nice. That was it already. <laughs> ah, a much better fight than uh, Gideon off near. <laughs> that's for sure. That is for sure. Well, I guess I do have a good reason to include Melania. Because now we have the real confrontation between Beauty and the Beast. Granted, it's a decaying, maimed beauty with her eyeballs rotting out of her skull. But you know, true beauty is found within. Well, which in her case is the pure essence of venomous rot itself. So, uh, okay, I'm not really sure where I'm going with this. Well, actually, despite her literally rotting away, there's no sense of disgust in her appearance. Especially when she transforms into a goddess, there's a great sense of grace and dignity in her design, instead of morbidness and decay. And I think we can all agree that there is a form of beauty in that. Anyway, we are going to kill her, and I had already tried out, before this playthrough, how she would react to death and death, because I was worried about her hyper armor. And rightfully so. However, what I found out is that as long as the first swing misses her, there is little chance of an unavoidable counterattack. So if you get a stance break, and you do it immediately after a repost, the first swing will miss, but the rest will hit and then knock her back. Which means that if she does the waterfall in response, which is very likely, you're far enough away from her already to react to it. In fact, I had a really clean and solid first phase. And because now I was using a rune arc and Godric's great rune, combined with the iron jar talisman, there was no time limit or danger of fat rolling. But despite that, whenever she does waterfall when you're not ready for it, yeah, that's going to end the fight. 
That's just the nature of the beast. Regardless, even though a lot of attacks would be insta-kills, Malekith's armor does in fact have high enough resistance to provide me just that little leeway so that I would not have to be perfect, as some hits were in fact survivable. Regardless, would having a little extra elbow room be sufficient given that we are talking about fighting Melania on a level 1 character? Because when you think about that, this could take a while. Damn it, now I'm suddenly getting bad RNG because there's nothing to punish here. And that only increases the chance of her doing the clone attack again or another waterfall. What the hell, dude? Oh, that's so hard to see. Oh. As long as she doesn't do the clone attack again. Or waterfall. Uh oh. Please. Second try Melania on arrow one? What the fuck? That is so unexpected. I thought I would have to spend like six hours or something on this fight. Wow. That was completely unexpected. I did not expect that in the slightest. I thought I would need like another stream and that's basically completely full of Melania fights. What the hell dude? Well, that was certainly unexpected. In fact, I even had time left at the end of the stream to fight Moke. Not that that was really worthwhile, because, well, it's Moke. But the point is that I certainly had not expected to have any time left. Quite the opposite, in fact. But now it is time for the final boss of the game. Well, bosses of the game. However, because of Death and Death, I was actually not too worried about the Elden Beast. Since it would be the ideal attack against him. However, Radagon was a different story, because he's way too aggressive to use such a slow attack safely, other than just not getting hit because of pure luck. But that's obviously not much of a strategy. So for him, it was simply sword versus hammer and holy versus, well, a lot more damaging version of holy, obviously, given that Radagon has 80% resistance. Regardless, the first attempt went incredibly well, so well in fact that I almost made it without taking a single hit. And when I did, I must say that Malekith's armor showed that with base level vigor and resistance reducing talisman, its high resistance can in fact make just that little bit of difference that you need. And just as I predicted, Death and Death absolutely shreds the Elden Beast giant health bar. But of course then I got some bad luck with the Elden Stars, so quite predictably, after a nearly successful first attempt, it went completely downhill from there. Yeah, you know what would really help? is some really good RNG, and I mean some incredible RNG, to turn this final victory in a very convincing one. And given that we're doing this to become Rani's shadow and concert, I'd say Rani, be a doll, 
and help set the mood to end this beastly run with some appropriate beauty.